Yeah, hi there. It's uh, election year this year, and uh, this is my non-party political broadcast, if you like. Uh, it's concerning and it's troubling, to be honest, when I think about this country. Uh, I am uh, bearish on the country uh, as a whole. Uh, if you look at the Conservative, Conservative Party, what have they done since they've been in office? Yeah, we had the Brexit debacle. That Brexit came out of nowhere. There was no need to have a Brexit referendum. Yeah, Tories were a little bit concerned that the Brexit party slimmed down their majority. So they figured that they'd just annihilate them with a referendum and get them out of the way. What does that tell you about the intelligence of the Conservative Party, about how much they can read the people? Because it went very close to the wire, okay? And Brexit came to be. Brexit, unfortunately, is going to be causing, in the future, irreparable damage to the United Kingdom, all right? I'm happy to argue that one way or the other. This is what I've done my studies on. Already we've seen um, our uh, GDP, our growth has been down quite a bit. In regards to uh, migration, it's been a total nightmare since we've left 2016. But that's another story. This, this is not about Brexit, okay? But hey, if you've got any view on it, put your comments down. Happy to try and address some of them. Yeah, we've got uh, Cameron, who put women in combat, allowed women to go into combat roles. That's not a good idea. It, it might sound good. It's not a good idea at all. Yeah. You know, on the one hand, we've got all this stuff about domestic abuse and domestic violence and, 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 and trying to outlaw misogyny and total like women as little, pretty, delicate things. And then the other hand, it's like, no, they're equal to men and they can fight in a combat situation toe to toe it, it, it just doesn't resonate there are lots of good things which women can do in the military uh, especially in terms of supply and logistics obviously on, on the medical side of things women have always been involved in that uh, but combat roles it's, it's just not good and you know we're hearing the results and ramifications of it where there's all this stuff going on you've got high testosterone environments and um, you know sort of women complaining about sexual harassment and stuff like that. Um, I remember when I was in, 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 in the armed forces and I was quite surprised. I used to go to a place called Rheindahlen in Germany because I was based in Germany for a little bit. And I remember Rheindahlen was very famous, like an RAF base, and it had a lot of women there. That's why we went there. And uh, I remember chatting. I, I went out of a uh, woman in Iraq, so they were called rural women's Royal army corps or something and um she was complaining about the sexual harassment she was getting uh, but it wasn't from the men mm -mm 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 -mm. it was from the women she said the women were very predatory i told her why don't she complain to a troop sergeant or something she said her sergeant was one of the biggest predators and when i said to her why don't you complain to the, the officer and control she, she said she, she couldn't do it because it was just too awkward that really stayed with me. Yeah, it really stayed with me in regards to the idea that you were thinking about leaving the armed forces because you were being sexually harassed by someone of your same gender. It was like inconceivable, inconceivable. Um, but hey, you know, there's this big promotion uh, in the army about having more women in the army and also focusing on the demographics of people who don't really want to be in the army. You know, what's the point in that? And that's come out in the wash when uh, Colonel Sanders or General Sanders is suggesting that we should rally and prepare for war against Russia. Uh, we should have a little video on that. I mean, quite frankly, I can't see nothing wrong with Russians taking over this country. They're very good at classics, very cultured people, have a long history, have Christian traditions. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think the Caucasian is the, or Caucasus Mountains is in Russia, I believe. So that'd be good for you white people if you like um then we've got the, uh, the 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 economy yeah the economy is in a state yeah it is in a real state interest rates are rising they were always going to rise always we did yeah we in britain did not just in britain in the west america did it uh, europe did it 
Britain did it. And that is, we done what we told Japan not to do. Okay, we told Japan in the 90s that they should not go for quantitative easing, i.e. For the, via the IMF. And that's what we've done. We've done it ourselves. So when we put those interest rates down, okay, to try and get us out of a fix, and now we're slightly bringing it up. And why are the interest rates going up? They're going up because of that war in U U Ukraine. Yeah, war in Ukraine is just another example of us wasting money, taxpayers' money, supplying uh, a failed war, a war, an unwinnable war, okay, and just helping the corporatists within our own uh, uh, country, the, the weapons manufacturers, etc., helping them, okay, uh, and a lot of people dying off the back of that. You know, 400,000 people so far in the last two years, not going back to 2014 are dying in that area in that conflict and it's no need to be yeah this is the conservatives yeah um labor well number one i've never voted conservative in my life i was never a fan of thatcher and i've never voted conservative in my life i've only voted labor once in my life and that was to get the conservatives out when they were in power from margaret thatcher's day in back in 97. Keir Starmer, it looks like, may possibly uh, be elected uh, as the head of the Labour Party, uh, who are, I don't know, it's felt that they might win the next general election. That is going to be devastating for Britain. Trust me now. The Conservatives cannot get their act together. What, we've had about four Prime Ministers from them, okay? Labour... I mean, this is a guy who cannot, he cannot even give an answer to what is a woman, yeah? This is a guy who's under pressure from various um, uh, 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 Labour uh, districts, uh, constituencies, because of the demographic, who cannot even speak the English language, okay, may be voting against the Labour simply because of uh, him supporting the nation's uh, stance on Palestine and Israel, yeah. So they're beholden because originally, you know, Labour, as its name suggested, was about Labour, yeah, and that you know grew in the nineteenth, late nineteenth century, twentieth century, yeah, and that was white working class down the pits, the mines, the builders, etc., uh, and, and and women uh, working in mill and stuff like that, yeah. Now, now. Labour leans on them. We call it in trading, leaning on, yeah? Relying on, taking for granted. Taking for granted white working class folk, yeah? And so by taking them for granted, they ignore it and look at the new demographic because when it comes to immigration, yeah, most immigrants don't come into this country to work in the fields, yeah? They congregate in urban areas. And urban areas are the areas where labour are predominant. So therefore, lots of these different constituencies are full of immigrants who labour needs or feels they need to hand to to get their vote. So they tiptoe uh, across certain areas and things. For example, uh, take the so-called LGBTQ, whatever, yeah, which has taken uh, the country by storm from different issues. You know, they're a very, very small demographic, yeah. But they're a very powerful demographic in terms of lobbying. Lobbying and interest groups, in all honesty, are part of the biggest corrosion, uh, uh, corrosiveness of, uh, in, 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 in the country in which we live in, yeah. It's almost like an infection, yeah. They determine policy on a constant basis. That's what was happening in the European Union. European Union, much, much smaller in terms of the, uh, the, the departments than the, than the nation, let alone all the different nations in the European Union. And so they heavily relied on interest groups to help determine their policies for the lack of expertise. And this is what our government does all the time. It always got an ear out for various interest groups. And there's two interest groups predominantly. Obviously, you've got the corporatists, yeah? Those corporations, uh, for example, uh, the food uh, uh, corporations, 
who deliberately put ingredients uh, which make their food taste better, yeah, but are known to be bad for you from a dietary purpose, okay, but the government will still allow them to create their poisons. Yeah. Likewise, a lot of the medicines and pharmacies. You know, I've looked at, for example, uh, business plans uh, for people looking for investments, and their selling point is if they take these particular drugs, they're going to be dependent on them throughout the rest of their life. The drugs ain't gonna, aren't going to be healing what the ailment is. It's simply going to give a relief to the ailment because the, 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 the revenue streams are based on continued use of that particular drug. So that's the way in which it works uh, in regards to um, the corruption, if you like, or the democratic process in regards to interest groups. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, that, 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 that's really mainly what I want to say. You know, honest, uh, Labour is going to be disastrous for this country. I mean, they don't, you know, <laughs> defence, they don't know the meaning of the word. They honestly don't know the meaning of the word defense yeah conservative power uh, conservatives have run out of steam i don't think they even had steam but they're laughing they're laughing at us because they see that we have or they believe we have no alternative yeah they believe we have no alternative and so we even go you know we were living in a two-party state not a one-party state but a two-party state yeah so you see we have that or you have that but actually when you look at it it's both the same ken Livingston. Uh, described it the best. He wrote that book. You know, if voting, you know, if, if voting changed anything, they would ban it. Yeah, uh, it doesn't. It's the status quo, and I think we as individuals need to understand that. Now, going on to the policing, you know, what we've seen about that uh, harmony, London, the the woman uh, silently praying, uh, or, or preachers getting arrested in the street by the police. Yeah. You know, that, that sort of um, secular uh, uh, dogma, that secular doctrine, which is banishing uh, uh, Christian ethics within our country, okay? Uh, it's very, very concerning, very concerning indeed. The way in which the police, uh, what with the protesters, you know, and that sort of uh, double-handedness in regards to... Uh, being very light on the pro-Palestinian demonstration, very heavy on any anti-demonstration. Uh, uh, I remember, for example, um, you know, I was going to say, yeah, any sort of type of opposition, they want to label people as far right. That's nothing, you know, nothing to do with that. We are looking at a situation where our institutions are crumbling. They are crumbling. Yeah. Um, they say, oddly enough, that fascism in general flourishes when the traditional institutions cave in. And maybe that's why they're very quick to label these things far right, far right, because they know that the traditional institutions, such as the church, I mean, church is unrecognizable now. I mean, literally, I went to church one time and I saw some chap, a Muslim guy, praying right near the front, near the altar. Why he did that? I can only hazard a guess. Okay. Um, been to another uh, Christian church where they only sort of accept LGBTQ type whatever. Well, that's what they decided they were going to do. Yeah. Um, churches are just crumbling. They came in to whatever is uh, the uh, interest group at the time. It's fashion. Yeah. The police... Police are virtually like paramilitary, in, in my view. Uh, they're acting like paramilitary. It's not like Dixon and Doc Green in, in back in the day. They're like a paramilitary force. You rarely see them on the street. And when you do, they come up in really ridiculous numbers. And they overreact or they underreact, depending on where um, they feel their loyalties lie. I mean, there's, there's videos of policemen shouting out from the river to the sea unbelievable and then when you see what they've done to uh like they call it lawfare what they've done to say uh that tommy robinson in particular uh when he went on the anti uh palestinian uh 
protest, if you like, with the, uh, with the Jews, the anti Semitic protest, uh, and the way he was treated, it ain't good. It ain't good, no matter what side you're on. You yeah? know, it's not good that you're going around arresting people. The amount of police they put on that guy, you know, what is going Where I'd like to know where those discussions are that they treat that individual like that that the judge was demanding for the address of the guy, knowing that the guy could be assassinated by revealing his address. And the judge say, well, there's no problem with that. You know, just give me the address, you know. Let's uh, put your, your family in danger. This is not the justice system which I grew up to believe in, yeah? So for me, the country is in a topsy-turvy way, and I'm bearish yeah if labor get in i mean the, 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 this this country is virtually unrecognizable from how i knew it 20 years ago labor get in it'll be completely unrecognizable yeah within about five years and if it's 10 years this country is over and out and i'm not joking you know between me where i live to me going to a train station I will hear about three different languages spoken when I'm on the train, likewise. It's not a joke. It's not a joke at all. That's it. That's all I've got to say. Over and out. A little ramp. Non-party political broadcast.